Sure. I'm a physicist. I work. Um, I've worked internationally a lot. I work at CERN at the moment. I'm so I was one of the several thousand people who found the Higgs boson, um, and I work at University College of London as well. I think there are two things, reasons why I'm marching. Uh, one is science is the best way we know of not fooling ourselves, and we that's paraphrasing Richard Feynman, who's another great physicist. <laughs> and um, I, I think that we can't afford to be fools anymore. We've got the technologies that science has put in our, within our grasp, within our power, and the society we've constructed around them. I mean, we have to pay attention to the evidence and the facts, and we have to do our best, honestly, to do good science. So that's one of the reasons. The other is I've worked internationally a lot, and I've seen what we can do when we work together to a common goal with mutual respect, and it's fantastic. It's a lot more than the sum of the parts, and it's something to be really proud of. And I think there's a tendency at the moment maybe to retreat into nationalism and isolationism, and I think I want to speak out against that, really. It, it's very humbling when you see in the data nature telling you something um, fundamentally new and interesting and important about the way the universe works. And at the end of the, the very abstruse theory, huge amounts of technology, years of collaborative work, in the end it boils down to is there a bump in this plot or not, and you see that bump appearing incontrovertibly. It's just a fantastic theory. Good afternoon. My name's John, and I'm a particle physicist. Thank you. So I'm going to start with a quote, or at least a paraphrase, from one of my heroes in science, Richard Feynman. Science is the best way we have of not fooling ourselves, or at least trying not to fool ourselves. And that's really, really, really important right now. We're, we live in a hugely complex society. It has the technologies to do amazing things. Many of those things are, are really fantastic. There are more people healthy, alive, living fulfilled lives, able to read, receiving education, free from disease and free from hunger than there have ever been at any point in the history of this planet. And a lot of that is down to science and what we can learn through science. We also have the power to cause enormous damage by carelessness or on purpose. So that's one of the reasons I'm here today. I think we, science is, is, needs to be called out as one of the best ways we have of trying not to fool ourselves, the best way we have of trying not to fool ourselves. And we cannot afford to be fools and we have to stand up and tell people that. So that's one thing, thank you. The other, the other reason that I'm, I'm here today marching and talking and it's fantastic to see so many people move to do that. The other reason, the main reason I'm here, is that I spent a lot of my career working in very international environments. I work at University College London at the moment, up in Bloomsbury. Very, very international environment there. I work at CERN in Geneva, which is a completely international organization. I worked in Hamburg at a big lab there. I've worked in the United States. The one, me one message that comes through all of that is when we work together, for common goals with mutual respect, what we can achieve is wonderful. Now, you've heard about the practical applications of science, which are really important. As a particle physicist, we don't really do them. I mean, we invented the World Wide Web, but let's leave it there. We, but we try and understand how the universe works, and sometimes that information is useful. I was part of a team of 3,000 people rivals with another team of a similar number of people who found the Higgs boson a few years ago. If, thank you. Cheer for the Higgs boson. Yeah. <laughs> if, if a space, space alien came down and said, okay, human beings, what are you proud of? There are lots of things. There are lots of things I'd be ashamed of, lots of things I'd be proud of. One of the things I'd be proud of is the fact that we went and dug a 27 kilometer long tunnel, as long as the circle line, outside of Geneva, and worked together for more than 10 years just to try and find out how the universe works. That is wonderful. Thank you. And the only way, the, the way we can do that is because we're working together in an international environment with people from all over the world contributing their skills, with people from all kinds of different cultures, with mutual respect. I'm very worried that at the moment there are trends that are retreating into isolationism and into nationalism. That will be very, very bad for us for many reasons, and one of the reasons is it will damage science and our way, our way of understanding the world. Now, in, in the UK, 
Thank you. In the UK, science is actually not very partisan, and in a way not very pol political, although obviously we're here, it's very political in that sense. But it's not a party political issue, and that is a great strength, that is a good thing. There's a consensus that scientific research in general is mostly on the whole a good thing. There's also a danger in that, in that it becomes ignored. And back in 2010, science is vital, we're here trying to make sure it would not be ignored. I think it's important that we're here again, trying to make sure that science is not taken for granted and not ignored. It underpins us so much of what we, what we benefit from around us. The final, thank you. <laughs> the final, I'm not very good at this. I can't wait for applause, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, the final thing I'd like to leave you with is, science is a means, not an end. Science will not help us make the moral and political choices we need to make. Well, it will help us make them in that it will provide the evidence and it will show what the options are in the real world, not in our fantasy world over there somewhere. And we need to move the discussion not onto what's real and what's fantasy. That's what science can tell us. And we need to then engage with the moral and political discussions about what we do with those actual facts. Thank you very much.